offering is the truth, nothing more. For. Because what does suffer mean? Sorry? Sorry? Consent. I consented to rape. That's what suffer means. Come on to come on to me, little children, that will suffer. It's a biblical term. It means to do by consent. You consented rape. That's the language. And your subconscious knows that language. It's your conscious mind that believes suffer means something else, which is the world of assumptions and presumptions. And when you work these things out, they no longer can flip it for you. They can no longer flip the jurisdiction they want you to believe. I did not suffer. I was raped by that son of a bitch right there. Full stop. And here's the evidence for it. Full stop. There isn't going to be any mitigation, nothing. And you must close the sentence there and then. If you don't, it's quite important, it turns into what David taught me as being a dangling, participle verb. There is no closure. And now I'm going to talk about closure. When you draw up a contract, or when you have anything, it doesn't matter if you're navigating from this point to another, it must have closure. Without that closure, the workings of your conscious mind doesn't translate into your subconscious, it doesn't travel through. It must have closure. If I ask something of you, I must provide you with closure. If you make a statement, you must qualify that statement and put closure to it. So, this, since this is law, this is about drawing up contracts, you write the contract that you want, and to create closure, you add a dictionary to it. Because the word that you say is what it means, and there is no, inter interrupt sorry, there is no interpretations. If you remove the interpre interpretations from your language, did you just disqualify the need for a judge? <laughs> Don't really need you, we've qualified what we're talking about. It requires no interpretation, no judgments, no opinions. Judge means I'm an opinionator. If you look up the word opinion, it means judge. It will say a few other things as well, for example, that it's a bank and a banker as well. And we'll get into that later. If you add a dictionary to your contract, a judge cannot get in between you and the other person, because you are defining your own words. Does that make sense? How many words do you want on this uh, page? How many words do you want on it? For whatever you want to say. As minimal as possible. How many words? Give me how many words. Ten. Ten words. Okay. Define each one of those ten words. One meaning, one word. One word, one meaning. Full stop. And then you bind it, international maritime law, and it becomes a document and it requires no uh, judgment whatsoever. That's how you draw up contracts. Very simple, but you cannot draw contracts because all of your priming is all about how dangerous it is for you to draw up your own contracts. In fact, it's so dangerous, this is how the devil gets you. But if you look at the details of those films that have those type of characters, you will say, you will see quite clearly all the devil wants is for you to be correct. That's all he wants. But they will say it's the devil that puts you into contract. Because they want to rob you of the ability to make contract with yourself. Because if you make contract with yourselves, with each other, 
you've removed the need for judges. Does that, does that make sense? Just give me a second. You guys are okay with that? Okay, so what was your question? So, so you know when they give you a contract and it's written in legally, there's no dictionary attached, is there? And what's that called if I don't add a dictionary to it? No closure. Under... Un under maritime law, under maritime law, and any law, you have to create closure for people. But there is no closure in your world, there's no closure in your religion, there's no closure in the amount of money that you have to pay to the government, there's no closure to anything. And when you do make a closure, which is to exit this planet, there's no closure on that either, because the government comes in and takes their due. They, what's the word? Uh, their penny. Yeah? There's not any closure in your life. The language that you're writing at the moment and speaking is called art. Articles. A R T. And what do we call artistic writing? Poetry. They got you writing your contracts in poetry. And as you know, poetry is open to a thousand and one interpretations. And the one that converts into the most amount of money to me, because I'm the judge in this room, is the one that I'm going to choose. And as you know, if you look at judge, it will say, look up bank. And then it will say, look up banker. And then it will say, look up judge because a judge is bank, banker. All judges are. All judges are. Okay? Now, when I prepare my documents, when I prepare my documents, I prepare it with closure, and I bind it so it goes straight into admiratory law, and I prepare the documents in the front exactly the same way that a judge does. So he knows that I'm the judge of that document. And there is no interpretation. And I give that document value by simply sticking a postage stamp on it. Once I've done that, I have added value to that piece of paper which now becomes freight. And since I paid for my freight, it automatically becomes maritime jurisdiction and in federal jurisdiction. Because a postage stamp is the currency of the federal system. When you When you go through borders, especially uh, the Middle East borders, and where they don't have much of a bureaucracy in place, and they still use the old uh, wheel, turn wheel stamps and so on and so forth, quite often you'll see your visa entry has a postage stamp on it of that country, and it will always be a value of over a pound of their country. Like if you go to Egypt, they just tear, tear off one pound, um, their one pound, Egyptian money is one pound, and they stick a stamp on it, an autograph, a name across it. That means you've paid for your freight, for your fee to travel from one port to another. That's maritime federal jurisdiction. Everybody, every courtroom on this planet is licensed only by one authority. Every embassy on this planet is licensed by one authority. Every courtroom is a vessel sitting in dry dock. What you have to do <coughs> is find out what territory it is in. If it's in the corporate territory, it's corporate jurisdiction. 
If it's common law territory, it's common law jurisdiction. And it could be a Chinese court flying a Chinese flag. And then you know you are in the embassy of the Chinese government. And the Chinese government <coughs> law applies there. If it's a corporate, gov if it's a corporate uh, court, then anything goes. Anything. Anything and everything goes. The only thing that matters is that which is what they say it is. Okay? But when you prepare your documents like this, or some of the people that I've prepared documents for, you win. Because you are the judge, the bank, the banker, using maritime uh, operations, safeguarding yourself in federal law. And you win the case. Or it'll be vacated. And if you don't have the language to be able to safely navigate your way through, they'll just keep it dangling as a participle verb. Okay? Full stop. Some of you's had your hands up. <coughs> well, my question was, you mentioned about the contract. So, could you technically, um, the government would have like an inheritance tax, so... Okay, stop, stop. What have you just told me? The government has an inheritance tax. He who makes the statement must provide the evidence. Provide me the evidence that they have such a thing. They just made it up. And you took jurisdiction. So how do you stop them taking the inheritance tax? Can you send them one of these documents? Yeah. F off. <laughs> You're my sword man. <laughs> the so I, I, on that situation, it wasn't meant to be jovial at all. I was actually being very serious. So you, you guys took me to you took me by surprise when you started laughing. I thought I said something that was funny. I didn't realize I just caught on now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Have you ever come across proceeds of crime acts? No. The confiscation orders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can send them packing. Um, okay. Well, we can discuss that later when, when we've done all this sort of stuff. Um, if you guys can just settle down a little bit. The reason why is I'll be turning 50 very soon. And 50-year-old people can't hear properly, you know? So if you can just, just, settle, just settle down a little bit. I, I age terribly. I age terribly. <laughs> so what was the question? Can we alter existing contracts? Sorry? Can we alter, change, rewrite? Who's the contract? I'll just give you an example, like a telephone contract, for example, for a mobile phone. That, can we rewrite alter the, using this? Can you, I'll, it, may I have your permission to answer you indirectly? <coughs> He's asked me permission. I'm now the judge, thank you very much. In my system, I have his serial number and I punch up the serial number and I can see how much his bond is worth, how much is worth and whether I can tap into it. Come in. He's just given me jurisdiction. He's asked me a question. He hasn't actually asked me a question. He's, asked to give him, he's, it's a, he's asking permission to uh, alter it. Who did you make the contract with? If both of you agree, that's what it is and what, that's what it is. And yes, you can do. Uh, how many of you guys use credit cards? I use credit cards quite often. Yeah, they quite often send me new terms and conditions. Yeah? And if I don't apply to it, the terms and conditions I've agreed to. They're essentially asking you for your permission for the new terms and conditions. If you agree to it, okay, that's fine. It's okay. Yeah? If you don't agree to it, the old agreement stays in place, full stop. You send it off because you need two people to agree upon these things. That includes your bank and so on and so forth. They can't change the terms and conditions which you entered into. But luckily from what Miller's taught, taught me, 
is you'll be able to break that as well because you will be able to syntax your documents, something that I'll be doing with the government documents, especially the British Medical Board. I'm looking directly into that camera. <coughs> syntax that document and disqualify it under Title 18 of making misleading statements, falsifying statements. And I can do that with almost every single government agencies, governments, corporations, and so on and so forth. So, why haven't they vanished? It's because they got all of you believing it is what it is. The pharmaceutical industry, which I'm a massive fan of, sarcastic comment, and I heard no laughter. <laughs> and this is a very serious comment now go to great lengths, go to great lengths in telling you how pernicious an organization they are. So much so, they would even tell you the definition for our industry, the pharmaceutical industry, means the preparer of poisons. It means the preparer of poisons. Where can we find that? Is that in the dictionary you've mentioned? Now, the reason why I don't give handouts is because Google will provide you everything that you need on there, and since I qualify every statement that I make, you just press it up on there as I speak. <laughs> yeah? Because don't take my word for it. I'm a judge, yeah? <laughs> don't take my word for it. Where, where would you find that? The truth is, you just punch it up, the definition of pharmaceutical, and it'll be right in front of your face, like this entire world but people don't see it. The flags of operation, they're known as flags of operation. They have to go to great lengths to tell you the truth. In fact, they have to go to great lengths and the last seminar I did, I made a little joke uh, of a guy that was smoking on that cigarette packet, it says this will kill you. <laughs> you know. What more flags of operation do you need? If they go to that extent to tell you the truth, Fool me once, fool me twice, fool me third time, keep fooling me, keep fooling me until I drop dead, is what you're telling them. Just by the fact that they have told you that is in the common domain and you can access it and say, don't want your poisons, full stop. And if you have any claims over me, who you say is the preparer of poisons, and I am not, you have no claim on me as long as they can get you to believe they have a claim on you, you will take jurisdiction. But now you know what pharmaceutical means. It means a preparer of poisons. And I must explain to you the lengths of how much they follow the law. Because every preparer of poison must be licensed to prepare the poisons. Pharmaceutical. Chemist. Preparer of poisons. And to the extent that they go to, they say you have to be a doctor. Doctor is a maritime expression. It's the physician aboard a vessel. And his job is always to add value to that vessel. Anything that takes value outside of that vessel is illegal. And that's what they prosecute you for, because you've taken value from their cargo. But if you initiate a physician, because a doctor is a physician as well, he now is on the land, as it were, and he's there to heal you. But you must initiate it, just as you must initiate the fiduciary system. Yeah, it's called the fiduciary system the judges operate under. That's the disguise that they are, uh, operate under, that they are fiduciaries offering you a level playing field telling you everything in their language that is the direct opposite of. Full stop. Am I making sense so far? The thoughts that you think with, the words that you think with, is the only thing that your bodies can live out. You cannot walk forward thinking backwards. You cannot. You cannot walk backwards thinking forward. Try it. 
Yeah? If I was a person in Australia who was born there and lived there for thousands of years, ancestry-wise, I cannot claim to be an Aborigine, because Aborigine is walking backwards. I cannot do it, because my subconscious will draw me away from the land that I stand on. You are an Aborigine, you are a non-Origine. You're saying Abor Aborigine. I must make the statement that I am an original, Origine, and I belong in this land. I am this land. I stand on the land. Then you move forward. I cannot say I suffered rape. I cannot say I consented rape, because I didn't. The conscious mind will believe anything that it's told, because it's the one that processes the words. Okay? The reason why so many of you have surface noise, which is the internal rattle, the endless rattle that runs through your mind, is because it's a dangling participle verb with no closure. It's running on poetry and assumptions and presumptions where there is no fact. It's all a belief, a belief after a belief after a belief. It's all in your religion, it's in your government, it's in everything. It's in everything. And they call that surface noise. Surface noise. When you start to speak with the simplified words that mean one thing, one meaning, you remove 90% of all words in the dictionary that mean nothing. It means no thing, nonsense, nonsense. Yeah? That is crucial. And you'll find that surface noise that haunts you all the time. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if the judge says this? What if, this? What if I don't pay the council tax? What if I trip before I'm going down to the accelerator? What if I run out of money? What if I don't have my daily bread? It never creates closure for you. That's engineered. You will meet people, especially if you guys are going to join ranks, as it were, some of the teams that I work, and most of them don't have surface noise. They won't have it, because I won't work with people like them. Before we break, one more subject. I'm going to go shopping, and when I go shopping, I'm going to get myself a loaf of bread, a pint of butter, sorry, a pint of milk, some butter, and a sausage roll. And that's what I'm going to get, full stop. What I will not do, which is called a negative thought, is give you a list of all the things that I'm not going to get. Because you'll come back 10,000 years later and say, Mark, I need some more time to fill that list. And that's the world that you got, they got you in, which is called a negative state of condition. And you are running on that negative state of condition. Thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do that. You shall not park in the car. You shall not make contract with each other. You shall not park on double yellow line. You are not in possession of your vehicle. You're not in possession of your own thoughts. You're not in possession of the here and now language. You are experts at everything except anything. When judges Politicians, attorneys, solicitors, they always take an oath. This is how you would tell if they're genuine or not. Their oath is no fact, no fact, and no law should be tried in court. Tried means to try. Try. It should never be tried. Hence, Parliament will never speak of a single fact. A courtroom will never allow a fact in. It's no, there are no facts in your documents. When you stand there, they say, all rise, which means they're giving life to you as a dead person, out of all caps. And then they put you back to sleep, back to the dead. When the queen gives you a knighthood, she taps you on the shoulder, just as a voodoo witch doctor would do on the gravestone and say, 
or rise to her. And then you're given lands, you're given facts, and you're given slaves, which is known as serf in English language. And there you're allowed to rule. Those are facts. That will never take place in a courtroom. I can have the ability to bring a fact into a court. Once I've done that, the courtroom is nulled. Because when a fact enters, there is no corruption. Also, when you prepare your documents like I prepare my documents, the judge can never play any tricks on you. Never. Because all boxes and all tricks of the courtroom is removed. He cannot play any tricks. If you do, you can prosecute that. I was going to swear, but uh, you can prosecute him or her. There are some people that I've helped out. Um, do you want to share your story later on? Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> I didn't know I helped you out in more than one case. <laughs> um, this is, can I introduce you? Do you want to introduce yourself? So, Let's stand in and do that. This is, give us your title as well, because you're a dock worker as well, aren't you? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it's <my> a joke. <laughs> my name's Gerald, and um, I got prosecuted under the 1939 Cancer Act. Um, so basically, uh, I helped. We helped about half a dozen or more people who the hospital told that they had cancer. Um, and they po possibly would die in six weeks or so. Uh, one woman in particular, go home and make your will. Um, and, um, you know, that kind of thing, say goodbye to your children. So they, she came to see me. She's alive now, some 10 years later. She had breast and ovarian cancer, which is pretty nasty. That killed Jay Goody in you know, a few weeks because she went for the poisons room. Um, actually, funny enough... Thank, thank you very much, Gerald. <laughs> she, she contacted me, but anyway, this woman is still alive and she... Um, but I'm, what I'm saying, sorry to cut in, is sin, is crime, is that he took money away from a corporation. So they prosecuted him, the only person in Britain to be prosecuted, am I right? To be prosecuted under 39 Cancer Act. That's no way that's going to happen. I'm helping him out have that thrown out and prosecute them, you know? That is that. So, before we go forward, I would like to give some people in this place a one minute slot, no more, one minute slot as to their experiences, who they are, what they are. Uh, if they can come up here and share that. If you don't want to share it, and you don't want to share it with the camera, so I beg your pardon, if you don't want to share it with the camera, just say to us, uh, cut this out of the camera, we'll just chop it up, okay? Or we'll chop it out. Does that make sense? But essentially it's to let people know who you are and how far you've gone through with all of this, those people that have had success using the things that I'm teaching and I'm doing as well. Uh, so we, we heard from Errol already. Is there anybody else that wants to share? Yes, please. Yeah. Hi, my name's Ray, and I'm part of a group called the Response Group. Some of you may be aware. Can you speak up a little bit? Okay, I'm a little bit nervous, Mark. <laughs> um, the, uh, well, I'm, I'd like to say is that we need more people to get involved with the Response Group. Those of you who have heard of the Response Group, what we do is that we assist people that when the process of being addicted. We will turn up to people's homes and we will stand between the home and a bailiff's. We are, within that algorithm, we've got some people that are forensically analysed their paperwork. And, so, and what I would do as a common law sheriff would insist to see the paperwork of a bailiff to ensure that the, the paperwork is correct. The bailiffs are not using the correct instruments to take possession of the property. That means it's they're committing a criminal act. The other thing that I'm doing is, is trying to get the police involved and engaging with the police. And I'm asking the police to assist us to look at the paperwork. But most importantly, what I need is people that are willing to give up a bit of their time to help other people to protect their property. How, how would we find you? 
I would, I would like people to give me their contest details. And what about the people behind the camera? The people, this is for everyone. We, we Do you want to share your email address with us my, or your phone number? My email address is rayny5 at yahoo.co.uk. The number five. The number five, that's correct. I especially need people based in London and the south east of England to contact me. Yeah, so that we can so that we can set up a proper response group to help those people that are in the process of having their property stolen. So Tonight's head is part of the group, so is Tom Fulford, so is it Mr. Eber, I work with Mr. Eber, so I have been up, up until very recently on a day to day basis going to court with him, going to the police station with him. So, yeah, and there's, there's many other decent people out there that are. So long, Mark, so long, great guy. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you very much. Email address one more time, please. My address, email address is R A Y Ray N W 5 at Yahoo. The point of these things is that the judges can no longer hold you in contempt of anything and threaten to imprison you. That's what he's saying. Otherwise, this guy, this chap, would be in prison bail. Well, I mark the should add that the first two counts were discussed, and as soon as they were dismissed, the judge had disappeared. I didn't end up. I went to the paper, I couldn't back up, and he was gone. Yeah, it's it's that's. That's, that, is how, that is how easy these things are if you're in possession of your own mind, your own thought. And he made the journey. Because he made the journey, I gave him the sufficient amount of training and the hours put in to prepare the documents to keep him safe out of prison. Yeah, that's the power of these things. And the judge could not perform any tricks and traps because he's in possession of a federal document prepared exactly how a judge would prepare his documents for filing. Yeah. And I'm fairly creative, so I can usually twist it around where I'm actually forcing them to become a judge if need be. Yeah. I can, I'm creative enough to be able to do that. And that's how I uh, safeguarded him from being in prison. Before a couple of other people, before a couple of other people are going to share a few more things, I want to speak to you about, once again, the language. When you corrupt the language, to the extent that it's corrupted at the moment, you get stratification of the mind. You create all sorts of characters and personalities, mainly personalities. These personalities are usually in a state of mental cognitive dissonance, something that I'll be covering today. When you do that, because you create subspecies, species after species, Everybody cannibalizing in our on each other. And we are the only species on this planet that run a cannibalistic economy. We cannibalize, our, we cannibalize on each other on a sociological level, on an economical level, and on a psychological level. This level of cannibalism is almost everywhere. Now, coming back to the operating system, that is within your CPU, within your brain thinking capacity. If I was, say, in Hawaii, or any one of those South Sea Islands, and my language, the language that I speak, doesn't punish the truth. If the language does not punish the truth, then there is no words to lie with because you never need to lie. And if you don't need to lie, the words that you speak will be the truth, factual. As a result, your operating system is constantly rewarded for telling the truth and truth. If, however, you punish the child for telling the truth, spilling milk, uh, damaging the house, you now create an operating system that has learnt that if you tell the truth, it's punishable. 
the child will now begin to find words that create covertness. It will learn to lie, and lie it will, because the rewards of telling the truth is punishment and pain. The rewards for telling the lie is no pain and no punishment. The child is forced to never speak the facts, speak the truth, and it will create its own babble, flibbing, flibbing. So, if I was raised on an island, say Britain, Hawaii, and the race of people that lived there do not punish people, their children, for telling the truth, but rather reward them for it, you now got an operating system, the language, the words, that has no corruption, no need for lies, no need for 101 billion personalities, personalities, not characters. Millions of people running around, cannibalizing on each other, which creates a perfect breeding ground for me to come in as a judge, controller, frictional money, religion, whatever you call it, and live off that corruption. And if I was a conquering force that understood the benefits of that corruption, and I entered that island that rewarded children for telling the truth and the wider society, I would have to change the language. And the first thing that I do is I will force you to speak the language of Babel. And if you ever told the truth, I will punish you. And if you don't do what I say, I will chop your head off, as they did in Hawaii, as they did in Ireland, as they did in this <coughs> land that you sit on at the moment. The people that invaded these places, they are not of a race, they are of a particular psychological type, a particular species of man and woman. They give you the illusion they belong to a race, they don't. They are a species of man and woman that live off that corruption. So, if you spoke your language that did not speak in Babel, that spoke factual in the here and now jurisdiction, the first rule would be to remove that language. And if you don't speak my language in Babel, I'll behead you. As they did in Ireland, as they did in Hawaii, and all these other places that they visited, the first thing they did was corrupt the language. And they usually did that with their religions, forced it on them. There's a particular... First of all, do you understand the profound nature of the statement that I have just now made? You must corrupt the language. That's the first thing they do when they go in, is that they will corrupt the language. They will, nev they will tell you to speak in ad-verb-verb -verb scenario a dangling participle verb in your head, where there is no closure. You're running on vile poetry. Your mind is constantly thinking in vile poetry, vulgar poetry. And they keep you in that state of fear constantly. When you do that, you create alternative personalities predatory-like personalities, parasite personalities, passive-aggressive per type of personalities, which is, an, which is a, an oxymoron, by the way, so I'll put some words into it, a personality that will uh, write pen letters, poison pen letters, poison pen letters, and so on and so forth. That's the language we used to use. I don't know what they call it now, they call it cyberbullying, I believe. But this is the activity of the passive aggressives. It creates all these sub-species of men and women and the judges just live off of it. The attorneys, the rulers of your world, they just live off of it and they milk you for everything. They'll give you the belief there is a huge divide between this region and that region. There is no divide because if me and you come together we have formed contract and two people make contract and if we agree upon that is what it is there is no middleman there is no king no queen you must corrupt the kernel of the operating system for this corruption to take hold 
and that corrupting system creates all sorts of subspecies. And one of them is psychopaths. We all know about psychopaths. It's a disability. It's nature's process of protecting itself from feelings because we are the only species that put, uh, cannibalize in on each other psychologically. So the brain cuts off the feelings. If I went to a concentration camps, uh, sorry, concentration camp, my ability to feel would be cut off because my body, my mind needs to do that in order to safeguard me from feeling too much psychological and physiological pain. We call that numbness. Yeah? And over the periods, as I get better and better, the synapses begin to form again, creating memories, feelings. If I was born like that as a child, there's very little that I can do about it. And you have to recognize them for what they are. You cannot hurt them, you cannot beat them. But imagine that a psychopath was born into your family, born into it. The first thing that if that parent was already corrupted, the first thing they're going to do to that psychopath is to beat it, beat it, torture it, until it produces tears, a form of mimicry. Because it cannot feel what you feel, you beat the child until it cries. Who's the fucking psychopath now? I have had psychopaths tell me these things. Who the fuck is the psychopath now? Yeah? Who the hell wants these feelings? You beat it out of me, so I created mimicry. That's what they tell me. So the world is a lot more complex than you think. Hence, I offer no judgment. I will not make any judgment on these people. What I will do, say, is I will help you. I have the ability to do that. I have the knowledge to do that. What is it that I'm saying? Do not be surprised that when the feeling types that you guys are so imbued with is the creator of these subspecies. Don't be surprised about that. Us that have turned up into your lives and try to help you because they've noticed certain things. I'm not going to mention them, but they're all around you. They try to help you because they see that you are emotionally disturbed. Emotionally disturbed because you cannot handle your emotions, which is so beautifully narrated in Pandora's story. You cut out all feelings of hope and there you float around. It's the language. Thanks to Miller, thanks to Federal Judge Wayne Miller, I'm able to put the words back in, deprogram it, get rid of it, so the corruption no longer takes you hold and we no longer have these subspecies. The subspecies are evolving, they're forming emotions at this moment. Nature's founding a way to bridge it. Yeah? So, these people work very hard. In fact, they pump in trillions of pounds to keep the illusion of that fear. Now, some of the people here have been successfully prosecuted and terrorized and persecuted because they are really good healers. In reality, there are hundreds of people in Britain at this moment that have found their own solutions to the illnesses and ailments that they have. And the pharmaceutical companies go after them. But you don't ever get to hear about it. You only get to hear about those ones that have been successfully prosecuted. But never the ones that had enough strength to stand up to them and say, F off. And there are many of them. Just as there are many people that have found incredible solutions, solutions that are so simplistic that they work 99% of the time. They're out there, but you haven't heard about them because of the language that you use that does not allow you to access the library of Google. Have the words, Google will provide you with the information. If you do not know the words to access to that information, the word is actually formation, I-N means no formation. If, just as the word independence means no 
dependence, information means no information. It means no formation. Just as UN means no, like in unlimited, United Nation means no United Nations. As a result, United Nations does nothing but says a lot of things in adverb verb, but does nothing. The open flags are running all around you at all times. I've slightly diverted, but I'll come back again. Refine your words where you mean what you say, not meaning what you say. If you can do that and create a full stop, you take full jurisdiction of your operating system, of the way that you think, and nobody can pull you down. If you can spend that time doing that, and if you can spend the time listening to David Wayne Miller, Wayne Miller, I beg your pardon, on how to syntax, spend at least 200 hours on it, learning how to syntax, then come and see me and I'll take what I'm teaching now to a whole new different level on the level that he is operating at the moment. Because his system is going global. It's going global. What I'm doing in this Britain, I'm the only one that's doing it in Britain, is going all over the world. There's one person in Australia, there's one me, and there's a few, a few people in Hawaii, and there's a few people in the US. That's it. That's about eight people in this entire surface of this planet. That's how powerful and how here and now it is. So whatever it is that you are guys are doing in your life, you are now in the here and now. So I congratulate you for that. That's a big transition. Most people cannot break out of the world of poetry. Yeah? Running on adverb verb scenario. To sum up, to corrupt a system, all you have to do is punish it. If you punish a child for telling the truth, you created an oper operating system that will constantly lie and lie and blag its way through life. You reward it for telling the truth, you create a system that is always rewarded when it's put in possession of a fact. And you cannot break that movement and you cannot break that child. You can only kill the child, just as Monsanto cannot break the cell membrane Otherwise, you'll kill it. So they find very creative ways to corrupt the kernel of the cell. But that's a different story. What is it that I'm saying? Find it within yourself to do that two hours, and I'll take this to a different level. Find it within yourselves to be able to refine the language so well that the people around you, as well as the people with you, as well as yourself, you're not punishing them for telling the truth. If you can do that, you will certainly be able to work with me. If you can't, I won't go into the world of the shopping list of all the things that I don't want. So I don't speak about those things which I won't do, because that's an infinity equation. I speak about the things that I can do, because that's the only thing I can do. And that's a fact. If you can find that within yourself, I'll work with you. I'll work one and one together. Okay? Yes? I've, um, I've watched David Grimmler's um, quite extensive letter, and I, can, I get the, uh, um, the initial greetings of how, how, how you can see in your documents. Where Correct I sentence structure, passe, syntax, grammar, exactly. which simply means write the things that you're going to write so I can understand it and make it so precise, it requires no interpretation. And make it so precise, it can be mathematically precise. Because one add one is always two. It's not anything else. That's a fact. <coughs> That's quite a profound statement. What does that mean in reality? No person can sit where he is in that jurisdiction, in that time and space. That's what that sentence means that it's not open to interpretation. What I say is what I mean. Watch me do this. You've seen it a thousand times, but you cannot understand it. Not yet. 
removing all racial connotations, all the things that you thought it meant. Pale face, speak with forked tongue. Full stop. Get the fuck out of my land. Because you're a ghost that speaks in mendacity. You say one thing and do the other. Very important. These people have disappeared. They've disappeared. How many people know that the Apache Indians held off the Spanish for 200 years? They held them off for 200 years. They tried to annihilate the entire race because they're corrupting, because their operating system was not corrupted, their thinking patterns, they could see a lie for a lie. And you cannot destroy that. You cannot remove the interrogation of that, the integrity of beg your pardon, of that. Cannot remove it. The only way to do it is to ex make the race extinct, which they did. And they ran on an operating system known as the Ontons. You do what is correct, and a thousand people will follow you. That's all it does. If you know what you're doing, a thousand people will follow you, and they'll fight the battle that you're fighting. The AA does it, a thousand and one of these free movements does it, because at the core of their operating system is that which is correct, that which is honorable, that which is duty bound. Anything else is fiction, it's a lie. You cannot corrupt it. Then, the modern day Americans came along and took over the, extra, the, the, the trying of the extinction of the Apache Indians. That battle went on for another 200 years. For 400 years, they held them off until a very clever man came along, an anthropologist. And he said, hey, I got the solution. And the solution is very easy. They gave them property. Anton does not understand a property. No Apache and Indian ever understood what a property was. They don't have the thinking capacity to take possession of something that does not belong to them. A cow, dog, none of these things belong to them. Not the land, nothing. They roam on it. They live on it. They do not understand ownership. Full stop. They said, give them property. So they came with lots of cattle and they promised one or two people all the lands that they want. Within a few years, the entire race was domesticated. Full stop. Their trick is to give you the illusion of ownership of your property. And you fight tooth and nail to protect it. And they'll sit back and just wait for the opportunity when your bond comes into fruit. And they'll go in and take what you have developed. The sweat equity that you added to the land so they don't have to go and remove the stones from the farmland, the houses that you built, so on and so forth. They just sit back and they go in. It's a perfect business model, been running for thousands of years in your world. Does that make sense? The insights into this are at the very core of it. And because they're at the core of it, they can't get away with it with me. They can't get away with it because I know their lies and their delusions. And their illusions. Okay? That is that. I'm sorry that I went into a slight preaching mode there. Sorry, may I ask my question? <laughs> I just wanted to ask. I mean, I'm fascinated with the movement and the past this syntax grammar. How does one actually learn it as a language? You know, as you would mm. learn French, German. Thank you. That's how you learn it. That's like good. French, German, or anything else. What, what is. Look, let me read something from you. Now, this little book here cost me $200. Yeah? He said. The reason why I do that is because if you add value to it, people protect it. That's the madness that you live on. I know the value of this, so I've got three of them. I've got three of them. One, I gave to my good friend Carl, who sits behind the camera. I gave him one. And the other one, I gave to one of my Irish ambassadors. And I kept the other. I never photocopied it. 
and gave it to them, I wanted to create real value. So I wanted to pay him for the things that he's done. It took him 30 years to write these things. Yeah? So, the language. Let's come to the language before I come on to a couple of other people here. I'm going to read this out for you. And let me see if you guys can understand any of it. Because it took me three years of study to understand how beautiful this language really is because it speaks in the here and now jurisdiction. But since most people cannot speak in the here and now jurisdiction, it's quite tricky to understand. And he did say it will take uh, 200 hours or more. It took me probably uh, 2,000 hours. Yeah, prob probably even more. How long do you think it took me, uh, Leon? Um, two, years, two, yeah. two years, yeah? Two years. two years of reading this on a full-time basis and understanding it. So probably 10,000 hours. But I'm, I'm, I am not a clever person. I'm a quick study when it comes to facts. But since my operating system has always been corrupted, I found it a little bit of a bit of a challenge. But luckily, the head, the head that I had on it is that I refused to go to school. I had agreement with my headmaster saying, just sign me in once, once a week, I'll come in, put my name in, but don't question me anymore. And that's how I went through. I never learned anything in school because I could not learn anything in school because they were not teaching me anything in school. Yeah, I taught myself. And you can question me on almost any subject you want, I'll give you the answer. Um, I'm familiar with probably 50, 60 subjects in depth. That's my statement. If you want to test it, you can test it. But let me just read that for you. For the federal judge knowledge of this correct sentence, such a passe syntax grammar, facts are with the damaged claims of the fraudulent modification passe syntax grammar with the words, phrases and sentence structure grammar by the adverb, adjectives and pronouns with the fraudulent grammar by the lawyers, attorneys, judges, filing. Full stop. Yeah? Do you know what that said? I understand it perfectly. What he's just said, I have knowledge and the papal trail evidence of how you corrupted the language. That's what he said. And because it's on paper, I have your signed autograph, not your signature. Signed autograph. Yeah? Full stop. That's a title, by the way. If you ever use the mail system to put through poison pen, that means modified things, that carries a prison sentence. Now, I'll cover these topics with you so you can have a good idea of how much power that you really have. Once I introduced a couple of more other people in, in front here so they can share a few bits and pieces. You will find it riveting as to how the courtrooms are going to work, because I'm going to speak to you about the courtrooms now. Okay? Real case scenarios. Now, that case was won over in what's known as the contract document vessel. Most of the cases of that nature I win over by placing the cargo into the document and using the document as the courtroom, empowering the fiduciary to be honour bound, duty bound, removing all planes and uh, all planes and boxes in the court, and deputising him to act as a fiduciary. He has no choice. As soon as he's opened a federal document, he can't get rid of it. That's how I won the case over him. But that's a simple case because the simplicity of it is that they are so. Stupid! So stupid! They left all the papers to our evidence. And I quoted all the titles, and I said, if you pursue this any further, you're going to find yourself at The Hague. Yeah? You're going to find yourself at The Hague. And I called it, for my knowledge of the Queen's Bench, for my knowledge of the common law courts at The Hague, is with the name and shame of the evil that you have done to that man, full stop. 
get out of that one. Yeah? And that's what happens. Thank you.